Well, at least it feels nice in the hand. If you followed my channel at all, you probably have a pretty good idea of how much I really dislike Samsung as a brand. This isn't really a Samsung hater video as much as it is more evidence that we need to be doing a better job of benchmarking and testing our phones. I used to be the most obnoxious ride or die Samsung Knight, but as they've been changing up their business model, they've been moving away from the types of products and the types of features that I really enjoy on our mobile pocket computers. My absolute favorite line of galaxies were the Actives, but now they're all turning into incendiary devices as Samsung's mediocre batteries start to puff up on me. But the line of phones that always had my heart was the Galaxy Note. This was the crown jewel, the creme de la creme, everything in the kitchen sink with a focus on a specific kind of productivity. I don't really care what Samsung is trying to call this. This is a Note 22 and it's getting a very high a very positive recommendation for me, especially for those niche consumers that want to do more with a phone. I've got lots of nice things to say about this phone. I don't have much positive to say about this phone. These two gadgets should absolutely not share the same name. I think we could all admit in Android land, we're facing something of an issue with ever increasingly powerful SOCs that draw more power and generate more heat, but we're getting these insanely high benchmarking scores. And it's worth explaining just real quick. You know, when we look at a benchmark, we see one big number score and a second big number score. But what really goes into that benchmark are a whole series of these tiny little pieces of apps and tests. I've been saying it for years though, this is only the beginning of a conversation on performance. We actually have to find ways to test this. I think the situation for gaming has gotten a little bit easier because you can fire up a game and just track the frames per second. That's a pretty easy measurement to describe and understand. But it's proven to be a much more difficult challenge to find some other applications that we can also time and rank and grade consistently to see if we really are getting any improvements for our money. Which is why one of the major tests that I like to perform of course, you've seen it on my channel, is when we're talking about something like video editing and video rendering. Rendering a video is a sustained workload. It occupies the resources of the phone specifically, and that is one real world application we can use just to see have we been getting these performance improvements? Unfortunately, tests like these can be heavily influenced by major changes to the operating system. And I recently put out a video talking about Android 12 and all of the apps that are moving over into scoped storage and how that has impacted performance significantly. I've been using this same sequence, this exact same project file for years. Ever since I left Pocket Now, I created this 4K video timeline with a soundtrack and a watermark transitions. You've seen it over and over and over over again in my videos. This one minute timeline rendered out to 4K, this is a project that the OnePlus 8 Pro used to finish in 39 seconds. But after updates to the app taking scope storage into account, now the OnePlus 8 Pro takes roughly 51 seconds to complete the same project. The V60 used to finish in about 40 seconds, now it's taken about 50. And the Note 22 is hanging with the kind of performance we used to see on older phones before Google changed up how your file management worked. That's actually kind of a big deal. Samsung has done something really well here for this application, keeping it optimized where we're getting around the storage limitations of Android. That's a positive, that's a thumbs up. But of the several video editing apps that I liked to use, we always saw better optimization on LG phones with PowerDirector. LG phones have always performed phenomenally well, and this is one of my favorite video editing applications. I just like the plugins a little bit better. I think KineMaster has always had the faster rendering engine. You kind of pick your poison on what method of editing video you prefer. PowerDirector also recently switched over to scope storage, but when we rerun a video rendering test on PowerDirector between the LG V60 and the Note 22, this two-year-old phone with plenty of battery wear and tear is still able to best the Note 22 by the tune of around 4%. And this is why it's so critical to get performance testing right. If you use KineMaster, man, you're in for an upgrade over older phones because of these recent software changes. If you use PowerDirector, buying a newer, more expensive Note is gonna be a downgrade 
from the V60, if that's your upgrade path, if you were thinking about flipping an older LG for a newer Samsung. But you can't know that if all you see are these benchmark scores. I mean, we're looking at like a 40% improvement of, over single core CPU use. And even at its best, in that KineMaster test, we did not get 40% improvement over the V60, even with the V60 taking a performance hit. You would not look at these scores and assume that this phone would be 4% slower in power director than this phone. And you would certainly not assume that this phone was an additional 10 seconds slower than this phone in that power director test. Driving me crazy that these two phones are kind of called the same thing. Samsung has gone above and beyond managing all the performance options of this new generation of SOCs on the Note 22, and I'm not seeing that same care. And I think this delivers consumer confusion. When we see Samsung making all of these grand promises, the, the Galaxy's fastest processor ever, which they make the same claims for both of these phones. They look like the same things on paper. They do not perform similarly. A rational techie would expect that. This is called an ultra. I mean, Samsung doesn't even play with the word pro anymore, but they're all Galaxy S22s. The Note 22 feels like this glorious return to those big, huge, baller, phablet productivity devices. The S22 struggles to outperform the S20. And if you run it really hard, there are situations where <laughs> it falls in line with phones like the Galaxy S10. My most brutal real world benchmark is processing photos. I take raw files and I run them through Photomate and I time how long it tests, not just to see overall how fast can it complete that task, but over the course of processing all of these raw files, seeing how much the phone slows down, trying to put that batch process into perspective. I, I mean, this is, I, I purposely make this a brutal test. It took 18 minutes for the Note 22 to chew through all of those files. And the Note running a super hot SOC only throttled down by about 8% from the beginning of the test to the completion of the test. The regular S22 took over 24 minutes to complete the same task and throttled down over 20% from the beginning of the task to the end of the task. My Pixel 5 running a Snapdragon 765 was 5% slower than the Galaxy S22. Only 5% separates these two phones, and this phone is launching at a higher price than this phone started at. And what's also kind of crazy is the Pixel only throttled 1%, not 22% from the beginning of the test to the end. That means if you have any task that sustains for more than a couple minutes, after a couple minutes of use, this is throttling so hard, it's slower than a Pixel 5. Note 22 crushed all of these phones. Like, it's not even close. But the same generation of S22 against substantially older devices, and we're seeing lateral moves in terms of performance. And this is probably where I should start wrapping this up. I am so happy to have a Note again. This feels like such a proper phone for grown-ups and those making an informed purchasing decision about a powerhouse device with features that really do get you through your day and help you replace laptop use this is it. This is this is the high watermark. This is the phone to beat in 2022. But substantially more people are going to buy this phone because it's cheaper. And if this is their taste of current generation Android, there's not much nice I can say about it. It throttles down aggressively. It runs hot. The battery is undersized for a powerhouse phone with 5G radios. Samsung is doing a great job of encouraging people to switch over to an iPhone. An iPhone at a similar price tier, I think is gonna be a better overall daily driver experience for these mythical average consumers we all claim to care about. As techies, we've gotta do a better job of really examining manufacturers' claims, these marketing promises. We really have to do a better job of looking at this stuff and, and going beyond these two big numbers right here. Someone who walks into a carrier store and buys this phone and is disappointed by the performance, they're not gonna blame Qualcomm. Or, I mean, they're also not gonna blame the Samsung Semiconductor division. They're gonna blame the smartphone division. And Samsung has absolutely wrecked the advertising landscape for consumer electronics. So if someone picks this phone up and they use it and they don't like it, well, I already tried the best Android. I guess I'll just switch to an iPhone. Even for techies, this conversation is super precious. If you have a Galaxy S20, I'm still making the assertion you have a better phone in your pocket than what Samsung has delivered 
in 2022. Don't at me, this really isn't an upgrade. This is glorious. But it's the kind of conversation that really needs your help, you know, as an audience, what you tune in for and who you support and what channels you're really into. And I'd like to use this video as an opportunity in the comments, rather than just flaming me because I already told you I don't like this brand, maybe share some of those other channels that are doing a better job of showing us what these devices can really do. I wanna know all the reviewers who really show their work. All right, drop me those comments. I have to manually approve links on uh, comments in my video, so I'm really gonna be working to try and make sure that the comments for this video are updated. Again, I really wanna support those creators that are doing a better job of this stuff. But as always, thank you so much for watching, for sharing these videos, supporting the channel. I uh, greatly appreciate all the support, especially those folks who, uh, who are joining that list of names on my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. Those folks are the coolest tech pals in the universe who actually care about what your bang for buck might be on a premium pocket computer. You know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch, uh, Facebooks and the Instagrams, and I will catch you all on the next video.